call to order Beale City Council meeting Tuesday, August 1st, 2023. Uh, Mr. Jeffries, please take the roll. Councillor Hadrava. Here. Councillor Keeley. Here. Councillor Loeffler. Here. Councillor Towner. Here. Mayor Carter. Here. All Thank are present, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda as presented? We do not. Excellent. With that, do we have um, Okay, sorry. No changes. Do we have a motion to approve? No motion. Thank you, sir. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Agenda is approved. Uh, reports from department heads. Mr. Jeffries. Well, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Councillor. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I believe this evening that everything that warrants comment is included in the agenda. So I will defer from any additional comments and we can move right into it. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, citizens Forum. It looks like we have nobody in the audience today. So we'll move on to consent agenda. Uh, the minutes, regular city council meeting, July 11th, 2023. Claims, um, I, payroll number seven in the amount of $2,350. Payroll number 14 in the amount of $16,315.89. Payroll number 15, $17,210.03. $17, $17, $17, Along with accounts payable, $137,415.18. For a total of $173,291.10. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? A motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you. Any comments, questions, concerns? Mm -hmm. None? All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. aye. Those opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Moving on to business. Item A, a resolution 25-51 authorizing the city of Buell to make application to and accept funds through the state of Minnesota Department of Iron Range Resources and Rehabilitation Development Infrastructure Program. Um, Mr. Jeffries, would you like to uh, go ahead with this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, the city had previously applied for a development infrastructure grant from the state of Minnesota Department of Iron Range Resources and Rehabilitation, the IRRR, for the final phases of construction work on the Damien Second Edition, this application was accepted by the IRRR. However, available funding for fiscal year 2023 was no longer available, and ultimately, this application was denied. However, beginning July 1st, the 2024 fiscal year opened, and this is, in fact, what would be a reapplication when we were invited to apply again for a potential new fiscal year funding. So I have fulfilled all the arrangements with the IRRR, resubmitted the application, discussed the project with IRRR staff and part of what we need to do to move this forward is to make application and authorize that. So there is a resolution before you this evening asking to authorize the city to make application and accept funds through the IRRR Development Infrastructure Program. Again, this is 
a reapplication of what was applied for back at the end of May based on the availability of funding in a different fiscal period. Thank you. All right, do we have a motion to approve City of Buell Resolution 23-51, authorizing the administrator to make application for a State of Minnesota Department of Iron Range Resources and Rehabilitation Development Infrastructure Program grant for the revised Damien Second Edition Infrastructure and Development Construction and to accept said funds from the IRRR if awarded? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All right, discussion? Um... Assuming this goes through, approving it and whatnot. Last time we did this, we had to postpone the project because we couldn't start it before approval. Would they be approving this in time for our current schedule? Do we expect, or is there a possibility we'd have to kick it back a little further again? My information at this time suggests that the intent is for a meeting of the IRRR board to occur in August. Should this be approved, work can, 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 can be immediate right after that. I heard today, unsubstantiated, that that meeting may be as early as August 9th. Since we have another meeting on the 15th of August, I would suggest deferring any action. We will maybe know more timeline-wise by then. At this point, no need to consider any further change in schedule. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Okay, hearing none, we have a motion, we have a second. Um, being this a resolution, Mr. Jeffries, please take the roll. Councillor Hadrava. Yes. Councillor Keeley. Yes. Councillor Loeffler. Yes. Councillor Towner. Yes. Mayor Carter. Yes. Motion carries unanimously and is so ordered. Thank you, sir. Moving on to item B, authorization for administrator to attend League of Minnesota Cities Clerks Academy. Looks like the date is 9-7 of 23 to 9-8 of 23. Mr. Jeffries, you just want to take this too since uh, you're probably more full of knowledge on that. The League of Minnesota Cities, uh, LMC, of which the city is a member, is hosting its 2023 Clerks Academy on September 7th and 8th in St. Paul. City clerks, administrators, they play an integral role in all municipalities, bridging the city hall with the council, the community, fellow city staff, etc., etc. So the League of Minnesota Cities has a blended learning program combining on-demand online coursework with in-person sessions to explore the current legal requirements, issues, and challenges that help city clerks and administrators navigate their complex role. Uh, this uh, is focused for both newer as well as seasoned or veteran clerk administrators, however, uh, is more valuable, more than likely to the folks with less experience in the role. And it's recommended that all clerk administrators at one point or another go to the clerk academy. Now to help all city clerks, the league has developed 10 different core competencies that help them succeed in their role. And they fall under three categories. They're in values, knowledge, and skills. All 10 of these core competencies will be stressed at the event. Uh, and it's important for the city to have their leadership at the session to cement and evaluate the competencies desired to continue to allow the position to function at a high level. So I would recommend uh, authorize the administrator to attend this session in St. Paul on September 7 and 8. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, do we have a motion to authorize the administrator to attend the League of Minnesota Cities Clerks Academy on the city's behalf? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, discussion. Uh, just another item to note. Um, 
all, all of these sort of things, the, the networking there is invaluable. I mean, you, I mean, the, the people you're around, um, you get so much input from others in the same positions. Um, you meet new people, new resources. It's, it's good for any, anybody who is associated with the city to be out and about at these events. I would like to add one thing to that, if I may. Very well put, very good comment, and it's especially valuable, I believe, when you do that networking and you determine where you are on the whole level of play. And, uh, you know, that, that, that helps cement confidence in how we, as a city, are administrating our functions. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Um, one last thing, thank you, Mr. Jeffries, for being motivated, being interested and willing to do the work for the city. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. All right, with, with no more discussion, um, we have a motion and we have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion's carried. Moving on to item C. The Hideaway Street Closing Request for August 26, 2023. The Hideaway has scheduled their 2023 Summer Karaoke Contest on Saturday, August 26, 2023. The event will be held on State Street on the 200 block um, in front of the Hideaway. Um, Nora has requested to have a portion of that block of State Street from Jones Avenue to 213 State Street closed from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, We've done closings for for those establishment establishments many times. Um, it's our community loves the get-togethers down there. I'm sure everybody here probably partakes in it. Um, do we have a motion that the city grant the request of Nora and the Hideaway to close that portion of State Street from Jones Avenue to 213 State Street from 7 p.m. to midnight on August 26, 2023? and to assist with traffic control by allowing the use of barricades. A motion. Thank you. you have a second? I'll oh. second. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions or comments on it? Um, some, somebody mentioned to me before about like other cities having ordinances or rules about having glass out in the street, like bottles or glasses. Um, and I don't know if we'd ever want to talk about an ordinance for it or maybe just like as a conditional approval of street dances or blocking off the street that provided they don't serve glass containers outside or something just you know breaking that out on the street or mm -hmm. was there any, do we have any issues with glass actually i was there every morning cleaning up after the l class and um there was maybe one bottle that was broken yeah. I, I don't not think that's going to say that's, that's we not a real problem with it no i'm just wondering if like, i think they kind of do anyways because okay. well, yeah I mean, yeah i i didn't i didn't have any problem with any glass really cleaning it up we had like i said we had i think one bottle out of all three days that i was down there cleaning wow. yeah and i think so, and who's to say that, that wasn't brought in from somewhere else mm -hmm. yeah and generally they're both great about cleaning up after themselves anyways and i don't think we have an issue i was well, just wondering if it would be most bars when they when you leave with a they will not let you take a beer bottle out of the and they pour it in a plastic glass mm -hmm. right. so or they serve it in cans i i didn't i honestly did not see that issue at all so i mean we could i, I understand it um, I but i yeah. don't see it as an issue right now it's not necessary yeah, if we start having issues with it, we right. can definitely and address Mr. it. Mr. Mayor, if I could weigh in there. Yes, sir. Uh, absolutely, I do not think this is anything that needs to be under any ordinance. However, uh, sort of an unwritten regular condition of approval that no glass in the street, I think, would mitigate some liability risk to the city should anything ever happen, especially if the party with the request is on notice that that's not a good not acceptable. Yeah. I think that would relieve potential liability to the city if it's merely mentioned as a condition of yes, you get the, the street blocked off. And I'm assuming they're both probably very amenable to it because they already do so well mm -hmm. at controlling it. 
Yeah. That's why I mentioned it would be something, even even in the future, something as a conditional option. Moving uh, forward. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All, well, all every time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Standard policy would be, I think, very reasonable. Well, should we redo the motion to state that with the condition of no glass beverage containers outdoors? The motion's just not up to me. <laughs> or, or do we just move ahead with it? Yeah, I say address it. They're already. You can address it at a time. Right. Yeah, they're already taking problem. care of it. Did I make the motion? I can't it's a non-issue at this okay. point. You did. I, did. <laughs> I don't think I it's no an issue idea. that it's a good it's a good thing, but I do yeah. believe that both bars already um, do their right. due yeah. diligence on doing yeah. it right. And I'm not trying to say that they weren't or I that think I you expected. Were. <laughs> so it was, so it was inferred. <laughs> it, in the future, we'll just have that line. We'll just have that line stated yeah. within the within the motion. Yeah. Okay. Does that so, sound about right, Mr. Jeffries? It's very workable if you're comfortable with allowing the actions this evening. Oh, not specify that. Everybody comfortable with the motion in the second? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any That's other? Right. Okay. Any other comments or questions? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion's carried. What's this? August 26th, 2023, the karaoke contest. You gonna be there? Oh, I'll be there, but I ain't gonna. I was, you ain't gonna no, bless us? Not competing. <laughs> oh, bless us with silence. Yeah. <laughs> It's the best. It's, the, it's my greatest gift to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to item D. The Hideaway Street closing request for September 2nd. The Hideaway has scheduled the towner. Help me with her name. Juganaru. Juganaru? Yep. Uh, wedding reception on Saturday, September 2nd, 2023. The event will be held on State Street on the 200 block, um, which is in front of the Hideaway. Nor of the Hideaway has requested to have a portion of the of that block of State Street from Jones Avenue to 213 State Street closed from noon to midnight. Um, again, one of the great events the establishments downtown have. Um, do we have a motion? The city grant request to Nora and the Hideaway to close the portion of State Street from Jones Avenue to 213 State Street from noon to midnight on September 2nd, 2023, and to assist with traffic control by allowing the use of barricades. I'll make the motion. Thank you. We have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion. First of all, congratulations. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Are you planning on extra law enforcement to <laughs> yeah. I would suggest it. <laughs> now, do we do we do we need to amend this motion to say no glass beverages? If I'd you, say no alcohol. If you can amend it. <laughs> if you can amend it to also call in the National Guard. Yeah. <laughs> it's reasonable. <laughs> Okay, um, that should be a good event too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, any other discussion, comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. All abstained. So noted. Thank you. Motion carried. That's gonna be a a good time too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, moving on to item E, approved Salvation Army Heat Share Program Agreement. Mr. Jeffries, you want to touch on this? Heat Share is a voluntary non-governmental program of the Salvation Army, which has been in existence since 1982. The program provides emergency financial assistance on a year-round basis with heating and utility bills to those in need and is used for natural gas, oil, propane, wood, and electricity. It helps warm the lives of the elderly, the disabled, and others who have nowhere else to turn. And is a one-time last resort for those who may have no other resources available to them to see them through a tough period. This program is especially valuable in that it may be available after other state programs have closed or are otherwise unavailable. So the Salvation Army Heat Share Program seeks partnership participation from utilities companies, utility companies and providers of which Buell is through the electric proviso in the form of notifying customers of the existence and availability of the program as well as by encouraging and soliciting voluntary financial contributions from customers and employees to the program. 
My understanding is that the city has participated previously, which I'm glad to hear about, and will participate by placing information regarding the program in utility billings to its customers, by placing this information on the city website, and by transferring or sending any contributions that may be received from customers by transferring to the Salvation Army program. So my recommendation is for the city to enter into an agreement to promote and support the Salvation Army Heat Share program. And you have some supporting information on the program following your introductory information on it. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Uh, do we have a motion to authorize the city to enter into an agreement with the Salvation Army Heat Share program for the period of October 1st, 2023 until September 30th, 2024, and to direct the mayor to execute this agreement on behalf of the city of Buell? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Discussion? None? Um, we'll just toss this out there too. Um, if, if, if you'd like to make a donation um, to the Salvation Army to help out with, uh, help provide people with utilities in the cold months, uh, if you go to heatshare.org, it should be pretty self-explanatory explanatory there. So does that money, if you do that, does that stay with Buell? Mm, no. Question. It says... Because I'm, I'm looking at I'm making a one-time gift of and my name is on here, but it doesn't say... And it says I want to give my neighbors the gift of heat. It says but, that uh, for the requirements of enrolling in the program that you're, you live in an area that is... I don't know how it words it, but... Um, you'd have to live in one of the areas that participate, right? Yes, to be a recipient of the needs. So it may not be neighbors as in Buell, but at least neighbors as in more of a broad area, maybe? Technically, we're all neighbors. I, I, I do get the impression that this program oh, yeah. might be quite Minnesota oriented. There, there was the ref reference to Minnesota in a couple of different places. It is not, from my, not, from my memory, it is not specified in the agreement. So, uh, regarding the agreement, the, the city itself is uh, no cost for the agreement to the city. That is a good question, though. Yeah, it says must reside in designated areas where funds are raised for the program. Right. That's vague. Yeah. If you uh, want to get the best explanation I've seen, go to the first page of the agreement itself under the fifth paragraph called transfer slash distribution of funds. And its second sentence says, funds will be allocated by each Salvation Army unit corresponding to Buell Water and Light Department in direct proportion to donations received from their area. So if people in the Twin Cities only donate $1,000, but people in the Iron Range area donate 5000 5000 would be used for the Iron Range area? That's my impression, yes. What I cannot answer is for you know what if nobody from the Buell area applies? Does that money go into the Buell area reserve? I wouldn't think so. No. Which at the end of the day is okay. People helping people is a wonderful thing. Any further comments? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. All right, moving on to item F. Uh, 
consider filling vacancy on Beale Economic Development Authority. Um, the unfortunate passing of Mr. Frank Pobish, a dedicated member of the City of Beale Economic Development Authority, has created a vacancy on that authority, which the city has expressed a desire to fill. The term of this vacancy on the authority expires December 31st, 2025. Notice of this vacancy was posted and the public was notified and requested that anyone interested in serving the remaining of this term should contact City Hall before July 28th, 2023 for potential consideration. An expression of interest to serve on the, in this capacity was received from one individual, Miss Susan Trunk. Um, with that, do we have a motion to appoint Susan Trunk to serve on the Buell Economic Development Authority? Um, with a term that expires December 31st, 2025. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll support. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Questions? Comments? We all met her just a little while ago. And, mm -hmm. and she has seemed like she's got a lot of spunk in her. And I work with her, so I know she does. And I think she's going to do very well for us. Awesome. So she loves this town, and I think it's a new person coming in with new ideas and um, an outsider looking in and you know maybe giving us different ideas that uh, I think she's going to be good. Awesome. It's good to see people who love this town so yeah, much step exactly. up to help with it. You know that. Yeah. Yes. Our, we live in the best town in this country. So. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Um, We didn't do that yet, did we? we didn't. Ah, any more? Any other comment? Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Susan. Now moving on to item G. Consider filling. Uh, consider filling vacancy on the Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, again, the passing of Mr. Frank Fabish, a dedicated member of the City of Buell Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, has created a vacancy on that commission. The term of this vacancy expires December 31st, 2025. Notice of this vacancy was posted and the public was notified and requested that anyone interested in serving the remainder of this term should contact City Hall before July 28th, 2023 for potential consideration. Um, an expression of interest to serve in this capacity was received from one individual, Lyle Peterson. Um, do we have a motion to appoint Lyle Peterson to serve on Buell Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission with a term that expires December 31st, 2025? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Have a second? I'll support. Thank you. Um, discussion? Again, we had a vacancy. Community stepped up. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you, everybody. Any further discussions? All right, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Jeffries, as of now, all of our positions are filled, correct? Ah. Uh, the Recreation Commission and the Library Board have vacancies. Okay, thank you. Item H, this is a big deal. Um, consider Consideration of a resolution of support for National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. Tony, you wanna to lead us in this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I, upon further thought, rather than a, con, a resolution of support, I suggest a mayoral proclamation may serve just as fine, okay? So, Project Opioid USA is partnering with Facing Fentanyl to observe and recognize August 21st, 2023 as National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. Their advocacy programs seek to further the messages of the dangers of fentanyl. National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day is established in remembrance of those who lost 
those lost to illicit fentanyl poisoning and to acknowledge the devastation this drug has brought to hundreds of thousands of affected family members and friends. So I believe I, it is in the best interest of the city and the communities to support these advocacy programs and to provide the important public service messages regarding the dangers inherent in society created by the widespread and largely unregulated prevalence and use of this dangerous narcotic. Uh, information has been included in your packets regarding these awareness and education initiatives. And so the recommendation is to adopt a mayor's proclamation recognizing and supporting August 21st as National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Um, forgive me, but I am unfamiliar with how we adopt a mayor's proclamation. We had done one earlier this year for Sexual Awareness Month. We did. For uh, the St. Louis County Initiative. Yes, we did. I have a proclamation that if it, uh, I can uh, propose and read, or you can read. And, sure. And ultimately it, ultimately, it takes the basic form of a resolution, but uh, you uh, call to proclaim the issue at the end here, and we'll sign and post it. So uh, would you like me to read the proposed proclamation, or would you like to? Do we need a motion and a second first? It would probably be reasonable, correct. All right. Do we have a motion to adopt a mayor's proclamation recognizing and supporting August 21st as National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day? I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. That's a, a huge problem in our country nowadays. I mean, we didn't, I don't know what age everybody else is, but when I was growing up, we never even heard of anything like that. And it seems like every day you turn on the, the news or open social media, it's, it's got somebody else. It's really scary, especially raising children these days. You just never know. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, does, do we have to cast this to vote before reading the proclamation? No, I don't believe so, because if you find anything in the proclamation unreasonable, then we can modify that. All right. Would you like to read it? Certainly. 2023 National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day Mayor Proclamation. Whereas the city of Buell is a statutory city organized and operating under the laws of the state of Minnesota, and whereas the city council of Buell recognizes and supports any and all initiatives which are designed to improve the health and well-being of its residents, and whereas illicit fentanyl has become the single deadliest drug threat the nation has ever encountered, and whereas awareness and prevention of the dangers of fentanyl is an all year long initiative with a goal of educating the public of these dangers and encouraging behavior to minimize these dangers. And whereas Project Facing Fentanyl is the home of National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. And whereas National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day is established in remembrance of those lost to illicit fentanyl poisoning and to acknowledge the devastation this drug has brought to hundreds of thousands of affected family members and friends. And whereas this is a day of coordinated response from fentanyl awareness organizations and affected families sharing their lived experiences as part of a whole group warning and informing our youth, the public, and the unsuspecting. And whereas the National Day is observed on August 21st. Therefore, I, as mayor of the city of Buell, Minnesota, do hereby proclaim the date of August 21 in the year of 2023 in the city of Buell, Minnesota as National Fentanyl Prevention and Awareness Day. And in testimony whereof, 
I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the great seal of the city of Buell, located in St. Louis County in the state of Minnesota, this first day of August 2023. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. I think next time I'll read it. <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, that's that's a huge issue in this country. Um, and the unsuspecting part, as you're reading through that, that that seems to happen more often than the suspecting part of it. Somebody doesn't know that they're being dosed with this drug, and I mean it's it's a huge problem. So, thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Council, for recognizing and uh, supporting that. We have a motion and a second, correct? Mm -hmm. um, this is just a motion, right, Mr. Jeffries? <clears throat> uh, it's just a motion, correct. Not a resolution? That's right. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Jeffries, will we have, is there uh, anything we can put on the website? Maybe a link or anything, a short message somehow on that? Mr. Mayor, yes, absolutely. We would both publish the <coughs> proclamation as well as put a link to facingfentanylnow.org on the website. Thank you. More resources, the better for things like that. All right, moving on, item J, uh, update on filling vacancy on City of Buell Recreation Commission. The recent resignation of City Councilor Randy Towner as a member of the City of Buell Recreation Commission has created an available seat on that commission, which the city has expressed the desire to fill. The remaining term um, expires December 31st, 2023. The public has been notified of this vacancy and it has been requested that anyone interested in serving the remainder of this term submit an expression of interest to City Hall for potential consideration. The timeline for submitting this expression of interest has been revised to August 11th, 2023, and it is anticipated that City Council will act to fill this vacant position at the scheduled August 15th, 2023 regular meeting. Um, just informational only. Anybody have anything to act? Mr. Jeffries, have we, uh, do we have any interest? We now, have, we now have interest from one individual. Excellent, thank you. And thank you to that individual. Anybody else have anything? No? All right, moving on, item K, uh, update on potential funding from St. Louis County to establish a teen center in the city of Buell. Um, Councilor Loeffler, would you like to take the reins? Do you want? To talk about it? It is completely your whim, Councillor Loeffler. Um, well, I just, uh, I completed the application for the grant, um, and then um, Mr. Jeffries had looked it over, so. Excellent. Do you want to add? I, I will add a couple of things, I guess. Uh, we previously, the council had authorized uh, submitting the grant to the St. Louis County for an American Rescue Plan Act grant. A location for this initiative remains one of the open items that Councilor Loeffler and others have been looking into. I have met with officials from B2 Bank, formerly the First National Bank of Buell, uh, to discuss considering and evaluating the former bank building on the northwest corner of State Street and Jones Avenue was a possibility for this facility. I recommend that we highly consider trying, striving to enter into some kind of an arrangement or agreement with B2 Bank. I believe the facility would serve very well. It is in a good location. The building has electricity, it has communication. It is, in my opinion, quite usable and also may offer additional space for other city initiatives and especially with regard to trying to locate something near term 
it's, as they like to say, shovel ready or nearly shovel ready. So I believe B2 Bank is interested in making an arrangement with the city. I have asked them to try to uh, cement something before the August 15th meeting so I can present more information to the council. But I went into this meeting with a really positive outlook and a, and a good sense of the building, and I come out of it with even a more positive outlook and a better feeling that this building would look would work very well for this purpose for the city as well as other purposes. So uh, finally, we're also continuing to look at the potential funding that might be available from other sources such as uh, the IRRR or similar programs. Uh, my feeling on that is the closer we are to establishing this as a reality, maybe the more energy and the more opportunity we may have in securing some other funding as well. So the grant application, which is ready to be submitted upon this, uh, uh, as well actually is probably going to be submitted tomorrow after uh, Councillor Lothler and I, we have briefly discussed some modifications to it. But it's for, um, uh, it, it, it's for $92,000 for the cost of the facility and the programming. A reminder, we have uh, previously received $25,000 from the Department of Public Transformation and the other uh, elements that are included in the use of funds on the budget include uh, building acquisition costs or improvement costs, equipment and furnishings, staff costs, utility allocation, food. One of the items is that food would be uh, an amenity, if you will, which is uh, either provided or provided at very low cost to folks, to the attendees, if you will, the, the youth. And uh, then uh, there's also the element from what the Department of Public Transportation funds will cover. Right. So we're left with $68,000 as the amount looking to be sought, and we're going to ask for $50,000 in this grant from St. Louis County. And that will be submitted, unless hearing otherwise, that will be submitted tomorrow for their consideration. From here, it's just a matter of A, hearing back from B2 Bank about what kind of a arrangement might be workable for them and our discussion might be, might be workable for the city. And then the decision by St. Louis County through the ARPA Act grant. That would leave over the course of two years, I will say, because our Department of Transportation for our Department of Transformation grant is a two-year project that leaves at this point about $18,000 unsourced for establishing uh, this youth center, which I think would be focusing on preteens and teens with a core age of 12-ish to 18-ish. Anything else, Councilor Lothar? Did I cover? You did, yes. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. That B2 opportunity might be, I mean, like you said, shovel ready. That's that's hard to come by, especially when funds are available in short in a short time frame. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. All right. Anybody have anything else on uh, on this item? Well, that's just informational. Moving on. Counselor's comments. Um, no. Nope. We, no. Did we, I miss something? Yeah, we've oh, got, one more. Got, we've got one more. We've got one more. Apologies. Stated that way. MK. Ah, oh, my pen got carried away. 
Apologies. Item K, uh, update on request to St. Louis County regarding establishing a county state aid highway on the east side of the city. Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The city uh, had initiated preliminary pre-design efforts and activities regarding the creation of a residential neighborhood in an area immediately north and east of the existing Martin Hughes School. Staff and the council believe that it is in the best interest of the city to, in part, provide access to this development by a new north-south roadway on the east side of the city. Locating a roadway in this area would have other potential benefits, additional benefits as well, above and beyond providing access to potential new residential development. So the city previously authorized myself to continue to pursue establishing a county state aid highway on the east side of the city with the St. Louis County Highway Department. We've now met with the St. Louis County Highway Department officials and personnel to begin conversations regarding this possibility. These conversations were very warmly received and additional meetings and initiatives are planned and scheduled in the next several weeks to continue to pursue this initiative. The city engineer is aware of and has been involved with these efforts. Preliminary design plans of the potential residential development, which will allow for the design of considerations of a new roadway corridor, are expected to be, are anticipated to be received by the end of August. Uh, I will make a few other comments here that I believe the county sees advantage to this in the long term. Uh, there will be, uh, as part of the arrangement and agreement, there will be uh, some things the city will give or take and some things the county will give or take. Uh, we may end up going through some additional traffic analyses. And this is not part of this, but there will be some work done on Highway 169 uh, in, coming up in a couple of years. And... Getting this in now will allow for some potential consideration of how the Highway 169 design is finalized. I think it's okay to mention that the work on 169 in Chisholm, which is already an ongoing project, is going to result in two roundabouts in that area. One over by the Iron World Minnesota Discovery Center uh, slash Ironman intersection and one at the initial eastbound intersection to Chisholm uh, where you take the easternmost flank around the lakes. There's also Highway 169 work that's going on in Mount Iron and I believe it's uh, been decided that there will be additional roundabout at Walmart area. Uh, possibly replacing that signalized intersection that's there. Don't say for sure, but there's other traffic control designs being considered over there. So there's going to be changes. There's going to be changes in the whole behavior of 169. And as we look forward to this potential road and the build out of the business center on the south side of the highway, getting involved in discussions about what might change here, this is a good time to get in. Uh, we are looking for access to, highway access to the business park development area and an upside of potential roundabout considerations here in Buell would allow for safer pedestrian traffic to cross the highway should they have those needs at any time, you know, depending upon what might come into the business park, et cetera, et cetera. Backing up a moment, all that being said, there, we may participate in some additional traffic analyses to take traffic counts, not only on the highway, that would be the MnDOT version of this, but to take traffic counts in town to get a... Isn't there already counters in town right now? I think there's one on there's that. There's one town. over here, I, I, I know. But the these would be above and beyond. They would go yeah. into a traffic study right. to mm -hmm. St. Louis County see, Highway Department folks. Yeah, see what direction of preschool. Right, as they would possibly look at, as we kind of talked about a meeting or so ago, some potential alignment to Pennsylvania Avenue, whether coming off the highway is to use the old 
approach from the old highway, or rather, there, whether there's some kind of a T intersection, et cetera, et cetera. There is, there, there, there is a, an item where a county state aid road has to dead end on another county state aid road. So part of that will go into the design considerations. But all that being said, very, very pleased. Uh, the mayor attended with me and like comments from you if you have any, but very pleased at the way we were received initially. Mayor, Mr. Yeah, mayor? They, uh, they definitely took it well. I mean, we basically walked into the meeting saying, hey, build us a road on the east side of town. And you, you would think they'd, they'd just shrug it off. But once we explained the city's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what the city is looking at doing, what our interests are, what we'd like to do for development. That by the end of the conversation, they're they're in agreement with us. Hey, that's right. that's a good idea. I mean, one of the biggest things to me is if, if that road goes in, uh, we won't have trucks in town anymore. They'll be able to right. access Highway 25. Uh, our industrial park will, you know, be able to access that with way more, way bigger equipment. Being it doesn't have to come through town. Um, yeah, and with with all that being said, by the end of the conversation, they were they were right on board, basically. Not saying it's something that's going to happen 100 percent, but it, it sounded favorable. And uh, from there, like Mr. Jeffrey said, we're going to be meeting again to go over, you know, the next steps. Is and it, a project like that isn't, uh, you know, an immediate thing. That's that's we a lot of thought goes moving a lot of and. The state and the county, they all have so many different departments and so many people have to get involved. And, and we, we, we know that MnDOT will be invited to the next meeting as well. And that's where we'll have more of these Highway 169 discussions. Mm -hmm. But they will be really involved into the arrangement between potential new county state aid road and how it, how it intersects 169. Yeah, I was just going to say on my way here, I met a, a pulp truck on the road and he was doing like maybe 15, 20 miles an hour. And it was, you could almost see that he was nervous driving down the street oh, yeah. trying to get out of here. And it's like, yeah, they don't want to be in town either. No. I mean, they'd much rather just jet out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know, was... Yeah, so hopefully in the future we can look at doing that. That would be, that'd be great for everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Anybody have anything else on that item? All right, informational. Now moving on, counselor's comments. Uh, who wants to go first? Nobody? You want me to go first? I can go first. What do you got? Uh, rack boards, of course. All right. <laughs> uh, we're not done with someone yet, so the... <laughs> the Buell Beach Blast is October 22nd at, from 3 to 5. August. What did I say? Okay. October. October. Whoa. That's wrong. Whoa. <laughs> Summer goes a long way. <laughs> August 22nd from 3 to 5. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have a movie night at the beach. We'll play Jaws on August 20th. August, right? August 25th <laughs> at 8.30. Uh, we'll, we plan to set the screen up facing the water so that you can float out in the water if you're brave enough. And awesome. <laughs> you got Record has a screen they can use for that? Yep. Awesome. It's only eight feet, but hopefully that's oh, yeah. enough for... That'll be plenty. <laughs> what time does it start at? Uh, you it's short event. It's a snorkel. Roughly it's a little little after I shouldn't buy an RC one. Should be done. Oh, yeah. I already thought about that. <laughs> hopefully not too many with snow. That is close. And <laughs> hopefully no sharks. <laughs> Hopefully no snapping you turtles. Just... I hear they're in there. Right. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. I'll be online. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Barron, yes, members sir. of the council, um, as a matter of record, just like to remind everybody that when we had previously talked about this, I had uh, placed a one dollar item out there as to the name of the shark, ah, and they had offered Bruce, Bruce mm -hmm. and challenged anybody to check into it. Well, I think the record should show that city attorney did look into it and determined that there was Bruce 1, Bruce 2, and Bruce 3, and has called it a draw, which I personally disagree with. Uh. However, I'm going to let it lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Randy, any more events? Uh, well, 
later. I mean, yeah, October will be coming, and Halloween's going to be awesome. Another. Ooh, we have things to talk about about that too. Yep, got a meeting on August fifth, fourteenth. So August fourteenth. Yep. Next rec board meeting. I'm sure, we'll be talking heavily about Halloween. Excellent. That's it for now. Awesome. Thank you. Nothing for me. Nothing? No. Come on. You got all the good info. No, just waiting for the county fair. Kind of excited about that. Yeah, I mm. forgot about that. This weekend. This, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah it boy. starts tomorrow. Does it? Mm -hmm. I can't keep up. Mm -hmm. Armband night. That's Thursday usually. Huh. That's it. All right. Do you have anything? I just have August 19th is the teen, um, just like a teen night, or teen day, I guess. It's probably um, 10.30 to 2.30 at the library downstairs. Just like a fun event. What was the date again? August? August 19th. And there'll be like painting and different things um, for the communities. It's open to the community, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have nothing. Nothing? No. That's okay. For once. That's nice, huh? That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, before you yes, have your comments, if I may, I forgot. I guess I do have one comment I would like to make. What do you have? Uh, an update for everybody. Um, regarding infrastructure in town and improvements to water services, etc., we had previously made application to Congress, United States Congress, for consideration of expanded projects. And I am happy to inform all that as of today, we are informed that we are on the final list for some congressional spending for our anticipated projects. Uh, fingers crossed, we will remain as a finalist and I will not tell you how much the amount allocated will be. I will keep those fingers crossed and say, hopefully it's an amount that will be substantially beneficial to the city. We will know more later this year. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. All right, um, mayor's comments. I really don't have too much. Um, thank you to Susan, thank you to Lyle. Um, it's really good to see the, the community step up when there's an opening. Um, and Beals seem to always do great with that. This town's amazing. Um, that's all I really have. Oh, um, congratulations, Minnesota. Cannabis prohibition has ended. Enjoy if that's what you enjoy. With that, do we have a motion to close the meeting? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, any further comment? Discussion? None. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Meeting adjourned. Aye.